It's one o'clock, August 8, 1962. A hearse slowly pulls into the Westwood Memorial Cemetery inside the body of 36-year-old Marilyn Monroe. Westwood Village Memorial Park and Mortuary. This is where Marilyn Monroe was laid to rest over a half century ago. Back behind these gates and around the corner, back then in 1962, people came from all over. People actually got up on top of buildings. You can see that in some of our old KTTV footage. That building where you see people looking down, that's where the Hammer Museum is now. And what they saw were pallbearers placing Marilyn's casket into an above ground grave. It was a tragedy. It didn't have to happen. Sally Kirkland was 21 when she heard the bulletins and saw images like these on the news, long before she'd win a Golden Globe and get nominated for an Oscar. Here at Channel 11, our photographers captured it all. It was the biggest celebrity funeral since the dawn of television. Our cameras were there from the time police first got to Marilyn Monroe's home on August 5th. They saw the window Monroe's doctor busted open to get to her when he got the frantic call for help from the housekeeper. It was the doctor that found Marilyn's lifeless body, and it was the coroner who said, On the basis of all the information obtained, it is our opinion that the case is a probable suicide. When you heard she was dead, what was your reaction? I was extremely uh, heartbroken. Kirkland has many connections to Marilyn. For instance, her mom worked with her on photo covers for Vogue magazine. They both went to the same acting classes, just on different nights. And while she never met her face to face, in 1998, Sally Kirkland played Marilyn Monroe, her real name, Norma Jean Baker, in a movie that imagined what a 50-year-old Marilyn might have been like. This is my wife, Norma. Well, you can call me Norma, but if you forget, you can call me, hey you, hey there, or hey stack. <laughs> Ever since her earliest days, she wanted to be just like Marilyn Monroe. As an artist, she painted her. I only spent an hour on it. If I spent longer, I would have been better at the nose and the mouth. Career-wise, she made herself physically look like Marilyn. It was in my maybe immature way, but very personal way of channeling that wonderful innocence and sexuality she had, who, let's face it, taught women that it was okay to be sexual. Using my smartphone, I showed her some of the footage from our KTTV archives, the many who trekked to the cemetery in 1962. Average people yeah. that came out and wanted to be there. Yeah, I mean, she's the biggest star in the history of entertainment, I think. If you're interested in whether I am married or not. Oh, I'm not interested at all. Well, I'm not. That's very interesting. She wanted so much to have a father, to have children. Her love for Joe DiMaggio was beautiful. Baseball great Joe DiMaggio, one of Monroe's three husbands, orchestrated the funeral. Their marriage lasted only nine months, but for years after her death, he sent roses to her grave twice a week. To him, she was lovely. Loveliest of the lovely, as seen here in the role of a non-competitor, she leads an Atlantic City beauty pageant Marilyn Monroe is mourned by the world. And to this day, there are those like Sally Kirkland who appreciate seeing these decades-old images we've saved. I think it's terrific that your station honors Marilyn that way. Ooh, do you feel the breeze from the subway? Isn't it delicious? And like many of us, Sally will remember Marilyn's acting and singing. Diamonds are a girl's best friend including this. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Mr. President. Happy birthday to you. Al Eisner, Fox 11 News.